Yo, what's going on? All my homies, homies, dudes, and dudettes. It's your boy Will back again with another video. And today I want to talk about a fragrance journey. When you go on a fragrance journey, once you get into fragrances, you start going way off course of uh, fragrances that are mainstream fragrances. You want to try something different. You start looking for the artistry in the fragrances. And I have seven fragrances right here that I picked up because of the artistry of it, but they are unwearable, at least for the most part. They're very situational. I mean, I like all of them, but they're just very, very hard to wear. And it's very situational when I'm going to wear these. So let's talk about this. So I got seven fragrances. I'm going to just give a little brief description of them. But these are seven fragrances. I'm counting them down from seven to one. And uh, seven being the one that I like the least, but I still like it. And uh, one being the one I like the most, but it still is very difficult to wear. So we're going to start with the first one. The first one is Machino's Toy Boy. The teddy bear. This one, uh, this one is a very divisive fragrance. Some people hate it, some people like it, and and this one, I I like it for the artistry of it, but it's very very situational. It has a strong rose note to it, and it's something else that that almost give it like a metallic kind of vibe to it, and it's really this is something that you just to me, it's something I spray on in the evenings when I'm by myself and I don't have to, you know, go out in public, but I don't know about where, I think I may have worn this out in public maybe once or twice, but yeah, very, very situational type of fragrance. I think this was a tester unit, so you may be able to see some of the information on the back of it, but yeah, Toy Boy, Toy Boy by Machino. This is number seven. Not a very wearable, easy, it's not an easy wearable fragrance, I should say. That is number seven. Number six. <laughs> I talked about this one, I think, not too long ago in a video. This is Mansara's Hindu Kush. Mansara's Hindu Kush. This one is kind of weird. Oh, and that's another thing. Um, some of these are kind of geared towards the summer or spring and some of them are kind of uh, winter fragrances this one I would say maybe would probably be like a fall type of fragrance and maybe spring the transitional fragrance that I mean transitional seasons but this one like I said before this is a uh, it has a note of uh, cannabis and when I picked it up, I thought it was the note of cannabis as far as um, like like the the actual smoke of from cannabis. But this is actually the smell of cannabis leaf, like uh, before it's dried. And when you break the leaf, you know, it gives off a little bit of a smell. That's what this uh, smells like. And it's when I weird thing is when I wear this, I do get compliments, but I I'm not crazy about it. So, number six, Mansara's Hindu Kush. Good fragrance. Uh, nice for artistry of it, but I'm I'm not crazy about wearing it. The next one up is by Juke. Joke or Juke. Uh, I know it's, most people will call it Juke, but um, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Joke. This Joke Wow. This one, it has a pretty cool looking top where the top kind of comes off and then as you can see, it's a hole. It just stops the sprayer. 
this one this is a, a nice fresh fragrance but it's not an easy wear fragrance it's it's this one has like a note of um a violet leaf and uh balsam i think balsam fur and the way it's mixed it's just really almost put off it kind of comes off like a like maybe a hay kind of vibe but it's it is it's really really rough to wear as you can see i haven't put a little dent i haven't put a dent in it now on the flip side if you get uh yoke while uh fresh the fresh version it has a, a clear label that one actually smells pretty good that one's a really good one for the summertime summer and spring this one actually is geared towards summer and spring too but it's just really really hard difficult to wear next one up this one is definitely a winter vibe fragrance and this one is mason alhambra's john low ombre um i don't know if that's gonna come in it's not coming in is that going to come in yep so this one is a clone of a louis vuitton fragrance um, um i can't remember the name of it but i'll put it up here but this one it's a very oody fragrance but it's if you like oud this is a very good one if you're getting into oud if you're just starting into oud this is not going to be a good fragrance for you if you're midway through your uh, fragrance journey and you've had smelled oud and smelled haven't, and you smell some ouds but you haven't, you not dove into the real, real skanky ouds, this would be a good one because it's it's oudy but it has that uh, rose oud saffron combination. And again, this one, this one you have to wear this dressed up because if you wear it like try to wear it casually, like with uh, you know dressed down. It may come off making you look like you stink versus <laughs> smelling good but when you're dressed up and you're put together this gives a, a nicer sophistication to your uh, whole ensemble so that's what the, that is number seven six five four this is number four Mason Alhambra's now number three this is a fragrance that I picked it up because um, it was so hot and everybody was talking about it but this is uh, Gucci uh, Oud Intense this bottle is super dirty let's see if that's coming in let me wipe it off maybe that's better there you go Gucci Oud Intense so this one it has obviously has oud but it's a different kind of oud than the um than that oud this one is more of a um a dry a dry fresh type of oud and again this is really hard to wear um i've had this for a couple of years and as you can see i barely got any type of den in there i think i may have worn it like maybe maybe twice in the last three or four years but yeah gucci oud intense um it may be discontinued so you know you might not have to worry about it because you won't be able to pick it up that is number five number i mean not number five number three number two yeah <laughs> this one might uh rub some people the wrong way but this one is tear de mass and by uh hermes where, it's, where it has the h on the bottom so yeah this one this one has a um um uh orange note but it's uh it's a dirty orange note it's like um like if you see an orange at a park and it's been kicked around and it's got dirt uh, all over it, that's what this kind of comes off, of, especially in the opening. But once it dries down, the vetiver comes through a little bit better. It gets a little bit more personality and it becomes a little bit better 
far as uh, far as his wearability but the opening note the opening part is just like I said I like it but it's hard to wear and um, and again this one I've had this bottle uh, see you see that I have a big den in it but I've had this bottle probably about six years so that's how much of a dent I haven't put in it because you know I have to be in a mood you have to be it's got to be situational but one thing I can say about the Terra de Mas, if it's a rainy day this works really good I've noticed that with um, Terra de Mas, anything that has like a, a dirty uh, orange kind of vibe or a veteran vibe on rainy days they work good so and then that's number two and on number one is boom Terry Mugler's Pure Tonka Whew. this fragrance is is made mainly for the winter time so if you try to wear it any other time it's really going to smoke anybody else out that you're around or whatever but this is uh I think it has Tonka chocolate and um something else i think maybe leather but it's all heavy fragrance heavy notes in this fragrance oh man it smells so good this is my number one this one that i like the most out of the ones that are hard to wear but it's still a hard to wear fragrance yeah but it is one of my favorites this is um one of my favorite Trey muglers also uh, I, I like some of the other one pure van and uh some of the other ones but I think this one, I like this one because it has uh, that character to it. Oh, um, just a little cue. If you have a Terry Mugler fragrance, these sprayers are terrible. So what you can do is what I did is I uh, cut it out, cut around that little part that has, it's usually a plastic part. So cut that out and then you can reach the sprayer easily and it can spray easy. Because before when I was spraying it, it was coming out like all um, messed up kind of miss but yeah that's what i have for you today terry mugler number one one of the my favorite fragrance that is hard to wear <laughs> all right so that's all i have for you today thanks for hanging out with me i know you can be anywhere else in the world hanging out with me talking about some unwearable fragrances which is that's something weird to talk about. Unwearable fragrance. Usually you want to talk about fragrances that are nice. All right. Spoil your will. Boy will. I'll catch you on the next one. Deuces.